the smallest acts of kindness or the smallest invitations, things that don't seem like a big deal to you, can really make a difference in someone's life. Hey, I, I came to see how you were doing. I just came to visit. That really um, did a lot in my life. I felt love. There are small things you can do to share the gospel, and they're not necessarily like the grand gestures that might be scary to you. When I tell about the gospel to my friends, it makes me feel happy. I think invitation is a very important thing that a lot of people don't talk about. A simple invite can change someone's life. They didn't rush me, they didn't judge me. I felt their faith and their genuine love. She knew that I was sincere, you can't pretend that. I always look at people for not what they were or what they can be. And feeling the Holy Ghost in me, warming my heart that I can do more to make them know about Jesus Christ. Love, share, and invite is a normal and natural pattern that fits right in with simply being a follower of the Savior. You don't have to stop living your normal life. Share what you love about the gospel of Jesus Christ and the church of Jesus Christ. Share why you would like to be a member of the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. For God's covenant people, inviting people to come and see, come and help, and come and belong is our life. As we learn more about love, share, and invite, let's hear from a family in New Zealand who was blessed by these principles. I was brought up in the church. I had been an active for at least 20 years. After my mother passed away, I pretty much broke down. And I said to Heavenly Father, please help me. I can't do this on my own. I asked them to send somebody to me. One morning I got down on my knees and I prayed to know who he had prepared, who was ready to receive his love. And Shirley Turner's name popped out on the list that I had. A few days after that, I had this Relief Society president at the time turn up. To be honest, my first feelings were, what the heck? <laughs> My intention was not to invite her to come back to church at that time. It was always about love for me, but the spirit prompted me differently towards the end of that visit. She said something like, the Lord sent me, it's time to come back. As awkward as no doubt some of those discussions were, she just kept going. I was not deterred because I was led by the Spirit and I knew that there was going to be a change of heart at some point in time. Even though I had prayed for help, in my heart I wasn't ready. But I had this peaceful feeling, I knew I was getting help. She would turn up weekly and sometimes I would be drinking. I felt bad too. But we just talked about things, got to know each other. She knew that I was sincere. You can't pretend that. Rather than just leave it with me, I felt that it was important to make that circle larger. And then one day she brought reinforcements. <laughs> and then I would, really knew I was in trouble. I had approached Shirley and I said to her, how about we go out for dinner? You know, like your husband and my husband. Renee brought her husband around who then found an instant connection to my husband, Dion. As I met Dion for the first time, he reminded me of myself. The Lord puts us in the path of these people because we can relate to one another. My husband, Dion, is a non-member of the church. How many times they come around, you know, get them around for dinner or whatever. That was really good. I always look at people for not what they were and for what they can be. And Dion is a wonderful person. By then I started to feel changes in me and started to ask questions. I knew I wanted to go back to church. 
but I was struggling with the life I was leaving behind. And that was scary. I felt their faith and their genuine love. I know I had turned into a different person. And I know that my daughter-in-law, Tiana, saw it. Tiana, she's a non-member. She started becoming interested in the church. I've never been brought up religious. We started having conversations. I mean, she started asking me questions. You know, oh, well, what's this church all about? I started getting these feelings that were overwhelming that I've never experienced before. She would always say to me, I don't know what it is with you, but I want it. Shane and Renee made sure that it was at my pace, what um, pace I wanted to go at. They didn't rush me or anything like that. They didn't judge me. About four months, I've been baptised. It was a big change, really, because uh, the whole house seemed to be happier. For the first time in my life, my life feels just peace and just feels right. Elder Cook, what stands out to you about Shirley's experience? I was impressed with the fact that Karina, the Relief Society president, was moved to action by a spiritual prompting. She was seeking revelation about who was ready to receive God's love. Karina didn't know everything that was going on in Shirley's life. She certainly didn't know that Shirley had been praying for help. I think that's a reminder to all of us that these are Heavenly Father's children. He knows what they need and what they're ready to receive. If we ask, he will guide us with his spirit. Elder Uchtdorf, I'd love to hear your thoughts about the invitations described in this video. In your opinion, what made them effective? Well, I think they were effective because they were natural, going for a walk together, going out to dinner. These did not sound like grand or elaborate activities. To me, that is part of the key to invitations inspired by love. We simply include others in the good things we're already doing. This kind of invitation is not intimidating or uh, creating fear. It is inspired by love and care for the other people. I am especially excited about the next video because it features some of our remarkable young women and young men. They bring such an energy and a fresh perspective to the work of the Lord as they love, share, and invite. My name is David. The first day I met my friend Courage, I was riding a bike past the chap when I saw lots of people there, they were dancing. And I went and I called him in particular and I asked him what they've been doing here. And he said they've been coming for a classes called seminary. He told me there's an activity at their chapel, so will I go with him? It was great. The unity and the smile among them. We met our bishop, and they spoke to him about the church. And I told him that tomorrow, can he join me to come to church? And they told me yes. President Nelson has instructed us to gather Israel, and so courage took upon that invitation and Courage came to me and introduced David to me and then the missionary started teaching him. I've been a member of the church for three months. Courage as my friend really transformed me to know about the gospel. I was really happy for transforming my friend. I hope to serve a mission someday after I finish my education because I want to serve and be like our savior Jesus Christ and live my life like him. Natalie invited me to go to ward camp. I have to give a lot of credit to my parents. They were the ones who first encouraged me. We drove onto the ward camp grounds and I just immediately could feel that this is where I wanted to be. We did like a testimony meeting. I do not like public speaking. I try to avoid it as much as I can, but I, I felt the spirit telling me, Natalie, go up. Hannah needs to hear me bear my testimony and she needs to hear that I know this is true. We started going to sacrament meeting. I started going with their family and to young women's activities. I just remember that I would count down the days um, until like the next young women's activity. 
the people, I think, were just so welcoming and so um, they genuinely cared about me and I could feel that. I think that that's a big part of what drew me to the church and what drew me um, to the gospel and made me want to learn more. The leaders of the ward were definitely always looking out for Hannah and just support her in whatever she needed. It kind of just made me feel like I belonged somewhere and I think that that was one of the things that I was really searching for when I started looking in and investigating the church. As you try to be a good friend, as you strive to get to know them and to love them in the way that the Savior does, then you're um, in many ways inviting them to come unto Him too. So when we're following the covenant path and we're keeping our covenants with Heavenly Father, then I think that just naturally brings us closer to the Savior. You never know how much you're going to impact other people. If you hadn't taken the step and if you hadn't done the small acts of kindness and the large ones, then I wouldn't know who I am and I can't even think about it. Well, there's power in knowing who you are. Yeah, yeah. Don't you just love their enthusiasm and light? Brethren, what did you see? Well, you said it, Sister Corden. These youth have a light about them. And I think we saw here was the Lord had put both Natalie and Courage in a position where they could be a blessing to their friends, Hannah and David. He put the candles on a candlestick, so to speak, so they could share the Savior's light. It can be hard to stand out for young people and for anyone. We'd much rather blend in, but the Lord needs us to shine because we never know who among our friends might be searching for the light of the gospel. And building on what Elder Cook said, we heard both Hannah and David express how meaningful it was for them to feel like they belong. Youth hunger for that sense of belonging. Some of them are starving for it. And what better place for them to find belonging than in the church of Jesus Christ, where they learn who they truly are and why they are here. By joining the church, they are joining a cause, one that President Nelson called the greatest cause on earth. And they are entering into a covenant relationship with the Lord, becoming bound to him. This is why our invitations to come and belong can be so powerful. I love very much what uh, Elder Cook and Elder Bednar have taught us. And of course, I love how these two wonderful young sisters shared with us their love and direct personal contact and using even technology in doing this. I also could help but notice how many other ward members and leaders were involved in loving, sharing, and inviting in these examples. It's no wonder they felt a sense of belonging. Now, I understand that Natalie and Hannah are here with us virtually. I think I saw her, them before. Natalie, uh, thank you for sharing your experience with Hannah. I'm wondering, do you have other friends with whom you are trying to share the gospel? Yeah, I actually try not to rule anyone out. We never know who's going to accept the gospel and who needs it in their life. And we never know who Heavenly Father is working on. And even people within the church, we never know where their testimony is at and how they're feeling. And I think that's why it's important to just love everyone and try and um, build everyone's testimony. Perfect, yeah. So don't make a pre-selection who might accept or not. They are all children of Heavenly Father, daughters and sons. We're all brothers and sisters. Now, have all those friends uh, you have chosen to to have contact and invite, have they chosen to become members of the church as Hannah did? Um, Hannah is the only one, but I don't think, um, baptizing people isn't necessarily always the goal. Um, as much as it'd be great if they all became members of the church, it's also um, just sharing Heavenly Father's love with them through me and just trying to make any part of their life better and maybe they won't become a member now, but maybe later in their life, they'll remember me and they'll remember how I loved them and how they felt um, loved through me. And then they'll be open to it. Well, this is so how beautiful how you express that. Uh, or could you perhaps for, for someone who gets discouraged when their friends don't accept their invitation, what, what should they do? Any advice for, for those? Um, I think 
everything you're doing, even if the other person doesn't accept it, that is still um, a win. It's a win for you because you stepped out of your comfort zone and you did something that you were afraid of. And even if they didn't accept it, that's still something that's making you stronger. And you don't know how it affected them. Maybe they didn't accept the invitation, but maybe they still thought that it was really great that you invited them. Natalie, thank you so much. You are very wise. When someone does not accept the gospel, it doesn't mean we have failed. That is their choice to, to join or not. Regardless of the response, we continue to love, share, and invite. For some, it takes time. Hannah, how long did you know Natalie before you were baptized? So Natalie and I had met about three years before uh, I was baptized. What would you say to someone whose friends aren't yet showing interest in the gospel, who are a little reluctant? Um, I would say that if your friends aren't ready to um, accept the gospel yet, that you can still try to be a good friend. So true. Thank you so much, uh, both Hannah and Natalie. And, you know, it's really, you teach the gospel by living your life. That is really a wonderful teaching moment just by living. The Savior has often described his work as great and marvelous or as a marvelous work and a wonder. And yet it's fascinating to me how he accomplishes that work through small and simple things, including you and me. There are relatively few members of his restored church, but the prophet Nephi foresaw that. The covenant people of the Lord, though small in number, would be scattered upon all the face of the earth and would be armed with righteousness and with the power of God in great glory. I testify of the immense influence of each faithful Latter-day Saint in helping others increase their faith in Jesus Christ. I have experienced this in my own life, as I am sure you have as well. I bear my witness of God the Father, of us all, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, who leads this church. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. 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 Brothers and sisters, the principles we have discussed today should feel very familiar to you. Love, share, and invite should not be seen as the church's new program for sharing the gospel. Rather, these are fundamental gospel principles that we are re-emphasizing in order to bring greater focus to all aspects of the Lord's work. When sharing and inviting become a natural expression of genuine love, then we will not talk about missionary work as a discrete and separate activity that some of us do some of the time. Instead, we will talk about helping others come unto Christ by making and keeping covenants, and it will be an integral, permanent part of our daily lives. And church leaders will no longer have to ask members to add sharing the gospel to their already lengthy list of things to do. We will share the gospel naturally sometimes without even realizing we're doing it, because it is simply part of who we are. These changes enable members to share the gospel in a way that is natural, loving, and with a much broader reach. And these changes encourage members to invite missionaries to meet with their friends when their friends are ready. Be normal. Be natural be you. The gospel is woven into the fabric of your life. So live your life and invite others to come live your life with you. It can start as things as simple as inviting them over for dinner or going to the park or just something simple to do. They will see the light. Uh, we've all had personal experiences with that that is within you. And then it will progress in a very normal and natural way. Sometimes as members, we feel like the first thing we need to do is introduce these friends to the missionaries. And maybe we're better off to wait until they're ready. We know there's a lot of ways that we can be sharing. Most important, however, is sharing our time and our friendships with those that we're loving and desiring to experience what we experience. That's really well said. 
And then we invite, and, and the invitations again are normal, they're natural. I pray for inspiration and courage to know how to invite my friends to come and see and then feel the goodness of the restored gospel of Jesus Christ. I invite them to come and help us serve God's children. I invite them to come and belong to his church. These are invitations of joy for us and for them. Brothers and sisters, what has been accomplished thus far in this dispensation, communicating gospel messages through social media channels is a good beginning, but only a small trickle. Beginning at this place on this day, I exhort you to sweep the earth with messages filled with righteousness and truth, messages that are authentic, edifying, and praiseworthy, and literally to sweep the earth as with a flood. As we commence this new year, I call upon each of you throughout Europe to lead out in the gathering of Israel. Pray and watch for opportunities to share the joy that you have in the gospel. You may be surprised how the Lord will answer your prayers. I invite you to remember this truth. You are perfectly positioned to find the children of Israel who are living in or are coming to Europe. Share the priceless message that can lead them to eternal life. I have complete faith in you, my dear brothers and sisters. You were born to do this. Europe has an unparalleled future because of you. You have access to the power, God's power, that will literally change the future of Europe. As you keep your covenants with increasing precision, you are the hope of Europe, and you are the hope of Israel. You are the children of the promised day. Today I bless each of you with increased spiritual strength with power to gather your families and friends, with renewed energy and courage. I bless you with increasing faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and with his help as you face your specific challenges. I bless you that the light you radiate will attract others. And I bless you to know that living in accord with the gospel of Jesus Christ is the only way to experience true joy now and forever.